So let's talk about configuring an IP address on a server. Now in server 2016, 2019, any edition of Windows actually, um, when you install the system, it initially sets up your system to attain an IP address automatically. And for workstations, that's normally what we want. Normally we don't want to set IP addresses on of all on all of our workstations individually, but servers, we normally don't want that. Now, the reason Microsoft does that is so that it can configure itself to the network and go out and get updates right away and things like that. But very often, we're going to want a manual IP address, a statically set IP address on our servers. And the reason we do that is because we want those to be static. We want to always know the address we're connecting to. And so when I set up a network, typically my rule of thumb is if I'm going to connect to the device, I'll set it with a static IP address. If I'm going to connect from the device, which typically is going to be workstations, phones, tablets, laptops, things like that. If I'm going to connect from, I'll configure those to happen automatically through DHCP. So here's how we'll change this on a local server. We're going to go to configure this local server, and I'm in server manager here. There are other ways to get there too, but from a server, this is probably the easiest one. So from the dashboard, go to configure this local server, and here's where you're going to do most of your configuration. You're going to set your IP address here under Ethernet. You see it shows me my IP address uh, and the if IPv6 is enabled. Now, if I have this with DHCP, then it'll give me a DHCP assigned, and then whether IPv6 is enabled or not. So I just click on that IP address, and that opens up my network connections. Now I can also get to here by coming down to my little network here, right-clicking, going to open internet and network settings, and I can navigate through and find it from these settings here as well, provided my settings ever actually come up. But ultimately, where I want to get to is to this right here. Here we go. It finally made it where I can go to Ethernet under my settings and change adapter options. And that's going to bring me to same spot. Okay. I, I'm, I'll use this when I'm doing it with workstations. For servers, I tend to go through Server Manager because I do it while I'm looking at all my other configurations there too. So I found my network adapter. Now in this case, I only have a single network adapter. If you have multiple network adapters, you'll see each one of them listed here. And you'll do that sometimes if you have a multi-homed system. And what a multi-homed system means is I have more than one Ethernet adapter in more than one network. And in some cases, I might set up my server to actually route between those two different networks. It's not my preferred option. I'll do that if I don't have other choices or if it's going to be a very low level of traffic. But if I'm going to do a high level of routing, I want a dedicated router. I don't want that running through my server. But I will sometimes use a dual home system like Let's say I have one network for connection to my clients and another network for connection to my SANs. In that case, it would be a dual-homed device, right? Because I'd have one network connection going to my client network, one network connection going to my SAN network. I'm not going to be routing between the two. So I'm not going to set up routing, but it would still be a dual-home device. So what you're looking for is you want to find the network adapter that gives you the connection that you want. And it'll show you, by the way, if your network adapter is disconnected as well. So if that's the case, you know, if you've got three network adapters and only one of them's connected and you only plugged one of them up to a switch, well, it kind of helps you isolate which one you're using. All right, so I'm going to right click on my network adapter. And there are a couple of things here. Before I dive into my properties, if I'm going to have a multi homed network, sometimes it makes sense to rename the adapter. So I'm going to rename this to local area network which in this case doesn't really make much of an issue or much of a difference. But let's say I had a multi-homed uh, device and I had one for my client network, one for my SAN network, one for another client network that I was running. Then I'd probably want to identify them, rename them so I know what I'm actually looking at. And that's easier than trying to remember, okay, Ethernet 1 went to which network again? So renaming it becomes useful there. All right, so I'm going to right-click and go to Properties, and now let's look at our IP configuration.
Now we'll start with IPv6. We'll actually spend a little more time on IPv4. But IPv6, we'll come here and we'll go to properties. And it's pretty straightforward. So we have obtained an IPv6 address automatically. I'm not using IPv6. I haven't changed this. With IPv6, because of the complexity of the addresses, sometimes it makes sense to go ahead and leave these obtaining automatically depending on how you have your IPv6 networking set up. If you have it set up where you're using a stateless address auto configuration, it's not going to change its address. So you will always know the address you're connecting to. And most of the time, if we're doing this, we're probably going to be using link local addresses as well. So sometimes it makes sense to set a link local address and just leave the global unicast address automatically defined. And then obtain a DNS server automatically. We have an advanced option here where we can set different types of IP addresses or different IP addresses and different gateways and set our DNS servers. Now, all of this is kind of blank. You're going to see something really similar when we look at IPv4 here in just a second. And so we'll actually look at it a little closer there. But just so you know, you, IPv6 is designed to allow you to run multiple addresses. And you can run multiple gateways, although that sometimes becomes a little more problematic. OK, let's look at our IPv4 settings. Let me come to IPv4 and properties. All right, here I've got this one set to do uh, use the following IP address. So this I manually set. Now, when you go to do this, you need to make sure that you understand your IPv4 addressing scheme. So know what address is supposed to go here. Know that it's not going to be duplicated anywhere else in the network. Know that it's statically assigned to this address only. If you accidentally set up two devices with the same IP address, it'll create a conflict and neither one of them will work. You need to know your subnet mask, and you need to know your default gateway. So I've got all of this set up here for my single address configuration. And typically, IPv6 is designed to allow you to use multiple addresses, but most devices, you will only use a single IPv6 address. Now, on a server, you actually can set up more, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Then I also set my DNS server, and I'm using my loopback address, because sooner or later I'm going to make this thing a DNS server. And then my alternate one is I just set up a global address. So this is uh, one of, I think it's Google's, publicly available DNS servers. So I went ahead and set that up, just so that until I get DNS up and running, I have internet connection on here if I need it. All right, Windows Server will allow you to do multiple IPv4 addresses. And we get to that under advanced. So here I can add in additional addresses. And there may be reasons why you want to have multiple addresses. A very common one, and this isn't the only reason, but this is a very common one, is let's say I am running a web server on this device. And I have multiple websites. And I want to separate websites out by IP addresses. So I can set one IP address for site 1, another IP address for site 2, another IP address for site 3. And then my web server can listen for incoming connections on all three of those. And based on what the incoming connection, the IP address of the incoming connection, what it was going to, then it'll know which website to serve. That's a very common reason to do that. And so you do that just by clicking add and then you'd put in another IP address and another subnet mask. Here again, I have the option to add multiple gateways. Like I said, that sometimes becomes a little problematic. If you have multiple gateways, your traffic will tend to go out both gateways, and it sometimes can create problems. So if you're looking for redundancy, that's normally, I find it better to do on the routers using first hop redundancy protocols. Under DNS, we have our DNS servers, and on a, the main page, you could add two DNS servers, primary and a secondary. Here, you can add multiple DNS servers if you want. You can also append primary and connection-specific DNS suffixes. So what that means is if I'm trying to connect to another machine, I can choose to put in this fully qualified domain name or just the first part of its name and append that DNS suffix, which would be the rest of the fully qualified domain name. And then we still have Win settings, which is maintained for backwards compatibility. 
Now, this is going way back, backwards compatibility to like Windows 98 and older. So this is not something that actually gets used very often and hopefully never gets used again. I am still waiting for Microsoft to pull that out. But we shouldn't be using Win settings very often. Okay, so that walks you through a basic IP configuration from the GUI using Windows Server.